So what's the big deal about bi-directional EV charging? Well, it all started way back when in the days of the LEAF. Uh, and the original intention of bi-directional charging was for residential home use, mostly for backup power in case of grid loss. And it wasn't very popular because it was quite expensive. Uh, it was also introduced and only available if you had an electric car that had a CHADMO connector. Introduced on the LEAF and as a bi-directional, this special connector shown here with the charger includes an inverter for 120 volt AC and 220 volt power output. The key component in all of these chargers is there's a grid tie inverter in there and there is also a special charge charger circuit that allows either 220 volts or 120 volts to be supplied to the car to charge it. So let's compare that to other emergency power options at the time and now. You know, and it turns out they're actually cost comparable. Each of these can probably be had for about $3,000. Uh, the only real big difference would be that the EV would have a lower cost of use and it would certainly be quieter. But the Generac, of course, being likely tied to a natural gas supply, would be limitless and could operate likely for days and months without any worry about exhaustion. Whereas back in the day, those early Leafs only had 30 kilowatt hour capacity which would limit the amount of days that you could be utilizing your car as your backup power for your home. A modern LEAF is way more, as much as twice the size, allowing for two weeks to almost two months of power for a conservative home. And keep in mind that you can always disconnect the car and drive down the street to the public charger and charge it back up for another two weeks to two months of electricity to run your house. Nowadays, thanks to modern thinking, this car can do lots more. V2G bi-directional chargers can be utilized now with fancy controllers to save you money on your power bill without the need for solar panels or wind generators or any kind of auxiliary power system. This fancy controller will use your car to power your home during the day, just as it would have if it had been used for an emergency grid shutdown. In places of the country where off-peak rates for electricity are large, the controller will charge up your car at off-peak rates and give to your load or back to the utility when the rates are high, certainly saving you money and potentially making you money. I say that with a grain of salt and we'll discuss that later, but the big point here is let's go big. Because this is the perfect example how V2G technology is big money made or saved being built right now in France somewhere at the Renault EV car factory that's soon to produce hundreds and thousands of electric vehicles. You can see here that these cars are being staged before they're loaded onto rail cars for distribution to the customers. All connected with charge cords they're essentially one big, huge battery. Monster battery can surely power this whole assembly plant all day long as long as high peak rates of electricity are in effect. Automatic magic controller then recharges the cars on off-peak, 
saving monster money, likely even more than those solar panels that the cars are being shaded by. Hope you're getting this. I wanted to give you the big picture first because we are going to now go little to show you what it means to you and me and all of us little guys. This bi-directional stuff is global because in Australia, some parts of the country have extremely high electricity costs. And in the summer, on and off peak rates are huge. This is an Ozzy 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 Tesla Powerwall down under that needs no solar to pay for itself. It offsets charging of a Tesla and electric car and the power needed for air conditioning to only off-peak power rates. Storing the power, the customer uses it when needed, anytime, from the battery or from the grid, at only off-peak rates. Differences are so large, it makes good economic sense. And perhaps anyone using Sacramento Municipal Utility Rates SMUD seen here. Let's talk about California. <laughs> they got problems keeping the power on there. They must be selling Generax like a banshee. And hey, they got some pretty high off-peak electricity rates too. I'm pretty sure a Tesla Powerwall or any reasonably priced battery grid to power system would be easily competitive with the Generax. Especially as we've shown them here where we believe that it probably costs about the same amount of money to put these installations in an everyday house in California. Because you're going to be able to use them for this off-peak rate offsets to save lots of money. And you know what? You might even save money with that Generac hooked up to natural gas. Okay, so now this next segment is going to make it just a little clearer and why bi-directional charging V2G is such a big deal, especially for Tesla. And it's simple. The batteries they make could be used by them to supply the power they sell to others charged off peak and sold on peak rates during on peak time and some of their chargers are even solar canopied and of course tesla has the largest charger network all controlled by them they have the potential to service any utility nationwide and essentially be the largest national electric utility Okay, and here's what V2G means to regular charger networks. If they had batteries, they too will make more money selling off-peak voltage during on-peak times. And we're going to talk a little bit more on this later. Here's what a V2G charger means to you if you have a cyber garage. There's all sorts of permutations and opportunities here. Uh, that we'll perhaps we'll cover in our next video on this subject, but basically it's all good. Now the reason why all this works is because of the utilities. They make money selling you power. And their biggest cost is the plants that make the power. And these big coal plants are big and inflexible. They cannot easily throttle up and down to meet with demands. Rather than spending millions and millions of dollars to address these spikes in power needs, they, the utilities, seek lower cost, lower risk opportunities that can provide consistent, dependable service to their customers. Ultimately, if a V2G solution can be achieved, it means better air quality to all. Here's a perfect example of what the utilities would like to have in their back pocket. 
a really big battery that they can use, especially in summer, to service the huge power demands without investment in more big power plants. How about hundreds of school buses, all EV, V2G connected, and unused because it's summer and no kids need to go to school. What a perfect dual purpose V2G concept, right? You know what? If they were returned to their ports in the morning after delivering the children to school, they could be used all year round. These buses would also be perfect for emergency power backup. Perhaps they're parked in the school lot and used whenever the power goes down in a school. Maybe the utilities can help finance or help pay for these new buses so that this kind of stuff can happen now. Why wait for this to happen in the future? It's conceivable it can be done now. Wow, that was heavy. Let's lighten it up a little now and talk about the different kinds of charge connections there are for EVs. You got your standard J1772 combo and Tesla, but only one is currently set up to be bi-directional and that's the one called JATAMO that's used on the Nissan LEAF. The current trend is J1772 will likely sustain, with CCS Combo taking over Chadmo. And of course, Tesla is whatever the heck they want, pretty much. I'm pretty sure CCS Combo could be used for V2G, but it is not now here in the mid-2020s. This is what the Chadmo Nissan Leaf charge port looks like under the hood, next to the J1770. Isn't that awesome? It's a beefy heavy cord too, like a big fire hose. Here's a CCS combo. It's got a pretty big cord too. You'd be using one of these to charge like your bolt. And you'll notice there's actually a little cap to cover the lower parts of that CCS charger. On the inside, you can see the red wires are for DC direct to battery charging. And I see no reason why this connector could not be used for bi-directional charging. And this CCS combo is all over Europe and can charge at up to 350 kW. Perhaps that huge amount of power comes in handy to charge fast cars fast. Okay, that was a nice break. It's going to get heavy again when we start talking about Tesla V2G rumors, which was such a hot topic on YouTube this year. Some big shot reverse engineers think that Tesla onboard chargers is not currently designed to be a V2G, but could be by changing some diodes to transistors on the circuit board for that particular part of the car. And if that little fact's not enough to pop your noodle, consider the fact that Tesla has, with V2G capability, the potential to access a lot of cars, or like 300 gigawatts of power, the equivalent to like about a dozen coal plants. That's a lot of capability. And if you include their ever-growing home battery capacity base, things could get real serious here money-wise. As of mid-2020, Delta Electronics, however, is leading the way with battery storage chargers and those V2G stations for Renault. Their battery fast chargers are perfect for public charge situations. It means better economics because you'd replace these $40,000 transformer behemoths with a $40,000 battery that could pay for itself with those peak charge on peak cell dynamics we talked about earlier. Now the world changes fast when big money is at hand. As for Tesla, they are really almost there right now. Perhaps they'll lead the way 
and give us V2G. We'll see. One thing's for sure, you won't get any bi-directing on any of these standard 120 volts stage one supplied with the car chargers. There is a possibility that you can use one of these stage two 240 volt high power charger with a Wi-Fi connection to a Wi-Fi connected grid tie inverter to get bi-directional charging. But it's currently only available with a leaf. It's time to show me the money. Okay, it's not really clear how utilities are going to encourage and pay for V2G on a consumer level. But as of mid-June 2020, with your newer LEAF and a Chadmo V2G on a SMUD power in Sacramento, you certainly could save like $2,000 a year. ka -ching. But there's a spoiler. Utilities are like casinos. They stack the deck with terms that always favor themselves. No matter how you save it or make it with solar power, it's unlikely they will pay you any more than you may owe them. That's the way it works. But what will work is the big 25 megawatt at the Renault EV factory and the electric bus lot behind the schoolhouse. And here's the final V2G opportunity at the Leaf Dealer in Sacramento, California. Plugging in 10 new Leaf cars with a Chadmo cables and a charger inverter controller that provides 5 to 600 kWh power to the dealership during peak hours and recharges the cars at off peak will save them $100 a day. And day to day, week to week, leaves are sold and inventories replaced, they will net like $35,000 per year, which is likely more than they will make selling those cars. Wow, and likely there's not gonna be any harm to the cars. More likely it's a good test of the batteries before they're being sold. It's a win-win, and it could be implemented as soon as the parts arrive and are assembled. Hey, we're going to do another video on this as soon as we round up some other potential applications. So, so subscribe and hit the bell to catch more on our channel. Thank you for watching.